My dear friends, my name is Jacob Fibash, and welcome to Uncaged Zoo Tours. If you are new to the channel and love animals, I recommend and appreciate hitting the like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to join me on my tours. For the first time on my tours, we're going to an international zoo. Welcome to the Montreal Biodome, also known as the Biodome de Montreal if you speak French. This facility is part of Space for Life, a science museum in Montreal, and it originally opened in 1976 as a cycling stadium before being renovated into the Biodome we know today in 1992. However, the Biodome closed for a few years for renovations in April 2018, before finally reopening to the public in August 2020. The Montreal Biodome has animals from four different habitats that are found in the Americas, temperate forests, coasts, the frozen polar regions, and the tropical rainforests of South America, which will be our first stop. Besides, rainforests are one of my favorite habitats because they're so lush. Let's begin. Rainforests may only cover less than 8% of Earth, but are home to many unique animals, like these scarlet macaws. I hear them loud and clear. Macaws communicate with each other a lot, their calls can be up to 130 decibels, which is as loud as a jackhammer. Besides, macaws scream with each other to make contact, defy their territory, or just for fun. Like other macaws, a scarlet macaw's tongue is dry and scaly, and has a bone inside, which is an excellent tool for cracking nuts. There are over 350 different kinds of parrots in the world, and 70 of them live in the Amazon rainforest. Macaws are also known to use items as tools, and they like to play with whatever object they find. They look at the object from different angles and toss it around. The scarlet macaws also live with a blue and gold macaw. Next door are some broad-snouted caimans. Caimans, like other animals, have a niche, which is a fancy term for the role they play in a habitat. In this case, Caimans make sure their prey population is stable by eating bugs, birds, fish, and reptiles, but are also food for giant otters and jaguars. As a caiman grows, it gets to eat larger prey. Some species of caiman live in the Amazon River, one of the largest rivers in the world. It starts in Peru and ends in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Brazil. It's 4,000 miles long which is long enough to get from New York City to Rome. Following that are some beautiful but endangered golden lion tamarins, also known as golden marmosets. These little primates got their name from their lion-like mane, which both males and females have. It's like how both male and female African elephants have tusks. Like other tamarins and marmosets, golden lion tamarins have claw-like nails and move around in the trees like squirrels. I guess that makes sense because their tails are for balance like squirrels. Golden lion tamarins have a special technique called micro manipulation. Using their long claw like nails, they can rip through tree bark to grab some tasty bugs. Golden lion tamarins, like other animals I previously talked about, are monogamous, which means they mate for life. If you want to learn more about golden lion tamarins, please refer to my primate panorama at the Denver Zoo Tour. Following these two exhibits for freshwater fish and another with poison dart frogs and an emerald tree boa is a large snake. Say hello to our first yellow anaconda. These snakes cannot hear very well. Instead, they pick up vibrations through their jaw. All five species of anaconda have heat sensing pits which are located along their mouths. They use these pits to find prey by detecting the body heat of warm-blooded animals. Like their cousins, the yellow anaconda kills its prey by wrapping its massive body around it. The anaconda also has powerful ligaments that are attached to its jaws, allowing the snake to swallow its prey whole. 
It can take a week for an anaconda to digest its food. Even though anacondas are big, they're not the world's longest snake, but their cousin, the reticulated python, is. In the spring, anacondas gather together in a group called a knot. Next door is a cave filled with tons of bats. Bats are found on every continent except Antarctica, and a third of the world's bat species are found in Central and South America. Bats are the only mammals that can fly, but their wings can also be used to keep bright lights out of their eyes. Their wings resemble a human's hands, but are more stretchy and long. In the wintertime, some bats hibernate, which is a very deep sleep that helps them save energy. Other species of bats migrate, which means that they travel long distances to avoid the cold like birds. If you want to learn more about bats, please refer to my Kingdoms of the Night at the Henry Dorley Zoo tour. Next up is another small monkey, our first Goldie's Marmoset. Even though they are related to Marmosets, Goldie's Marmosets are in their own genus, Calamico. Other than that, Goldie's Marmosets only give birth to one baby, and the females usually take care of said baby. During the dry season, Goldie's Marmosets eat mushrooms when food is scarce. They also have three molars instead of two, and can leap up to 13 feet from branch to branch. Okay, let's see. Two small monkeys, an anaconda, macaws, and bats are all checked off. But now let's see the world's largest rodent, who lives with a red-footed tortoise and a crested screamer. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since my South America at the Montgomery Zoo tour, say hello to the capybaras. Like cows and goats, capybars eat their food, regurgitate it, and chew it up some more. They chew their food side to side like a camel. Besides, 75% of a capybara's diet is only six types of plants. Like hippos, a capybara's eyes, ears, and nostrils are found at the top of its head, so it can look, smell, and hear while staying underwater. Capybaras can hold their breath for up to five minutes and have webbed feet like a platypus or a duck. Their name comes from an old Tubi word that translates to grass eater. Capybaras live from Argentina to the Amazon rainforest, which has a lot of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the amount of plants and animals within an ecosystem, and the Amazon has more than 10% of all the world's creatures, from jaguars to spider monkeys. We'll see some baby capybaras, when we visit Elephant Odyssey at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. The second-to-last exhibit has another crested screamer and a scarlet ibis, but to find our last animal, we just need to look up for a Linnaeus's two-toed sloth. Seeing a sloth active is something that you don't see every day. A sloth's claws are handy for hanging onto trees, but they can drop into a river to cross it while doing the breaststroke. Most of the time, sloths curl up into a ball and sleep for up to 15 hours a day because of their low-energy diet. Sloths also move at less than one-tenth of a mile per hour, making them the world's slowest mammal. Even though sloths are slow, they still play a big part in keeping rainforests healthy. Sloths are hunted by cougars, harpy eagles, and jaguars, but without prey, Predators wouldn't have anything to eat. If there were no predators, there would be too much prey, and soon there would be no plants left. Without plants, prey wouldn't survive either, and the whole ecosystem would go out of balance. We'll get to see more active sloths when we visit the small mammal house at the Smithsonian National Zoo and the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. Before we leave, Let's take a look at this relaxing view of the entire section. Now that's a pretty peaceful way to end our first international zoo tour. Besides, this exhibit is one of the reasons why you'll love the Montreal Biodome. We only have three more sections to go, and you can decide which one you would like to see next. If we head to the Laurentine Maple Forest, we'll see a beaver swimming underwater, very active raccoons, sleepy otters, and a Canada lynx. Our second choice is the Gulf of St. Lawrence, where we'll see our first mussels, urchins, plovers, and seagulls. 
along with sea stars, anemones, and shrimp. Our final option is a quick look at the subpolar regions, where we'll see puffins and a penguin feeding. Today's question is, are there any other international zoos that you would like to see on my channel? Thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time. You're smart, creative, and kind.